Welcome to today's webinar uh, from MoneyFit. Our MoneyFit live webinars today's topic is scores of credit score factors. Over 100 factors of the FICO Next Gen Credit Score, that's the eight or higher score. My name is Todd Christensen, Education Manager at MoneyFit, also author of Everyday Money for Everyday People. I appreciate you joining me. We're going to jump right into this uh, uh, webinar topic and let's get, get going with the basics here. You will see all over the internet, all over web, uh, FICO and myfico.com's website, this, uh, a, a version of this pie chart. It's called, uh, it's known as the FICO pie chart. It shows there are five basic factors in your credit score. 35% is your payment history, 30% the amount of debt that you owe, 15% the length of time you've had credit, 10% your new credit, and 10% the credit mix. The reality is much more complicated than that. That's a nice general overview, and this, this FICO pie chart has been around for several decades now. The reality is it's not very accurate. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good idea, it's a very nice summary but it doesn't give a really good idea of what these each mean. For example, where, where does your bankruptcy, if somebody filed for bankruptcy, where does that fit in there? Uh, if, does it matter if you use a, a credit card from a bank or a credit union? Does it matter if you use a uh, consumer finance or a, a consumer finance company versus using a national bank credit card? These actually all do matter. There are over a hundred credit score uh, codes that if you pull your credit or the lender pulls your credit and there's anything in there negative or uh, that's holding it's bringing the score down it's going to indicate this code had an inf had, had an effect on their score that's what we're going to go through today so here's the problem yeah as I mentioned what if the, uh, you file for bankruptcy what if you're new to credit you don't have any payment history you don't have any debt no uh, debt to income, or excuse me, debt to credit limit ratio, um, no mix. I mean, how does that work? What if you're 30 days late on a payment versus 120 days late? How, what's the difference there? And the type of institution and the type of consumer loans, these all do factor into your credit. So let's go ahead and just, we're not going to go through all 132 scoring codes. You can find information on these codes uh, by just Googling them, finding them on the internet, or you can go, uh, we do have some information available at moneyfit.org on the uh, each of these codes. All right, let's go with, and they, all the codes start with a letter, followed by generally a number. Codes A and B are all about amounts. And now it doesn't go alphabetically necessarily, seems that they have tried to line up a general idea or the general code purpose or meaning with the letter. So A is all about amount. And then they ran out of, uh, when they got to A9, they went to B0. And so A's and B's are all about amounts. How much do you owe on mortgages? If you owe too much on the mortgage, if you've just got a brand new mortgage and, and it's still very close to the original amount, that can, that's going to be a code that can negatively push your could push your credit score down. On how about owed on new accounts, whether it's a credit card, a retail account, a home loan, a car loan, any kind of account, if it's brand new and you have a large balance on it compared to the original balance or to the credit score or credit limit, that that this code there's some codes that will um, draw that score down. I, uh, Installment accounts, say a personal loan, a car loan, student loans, even uh, mortgage accounts, mortgage loans are installment accounts. If you haven't paid down very much from your original balance, there's codes that can help, that can um, hurt your score on this. Retail accounts spe are specified here as well and, and throughout your these 132 codes. If you have a store card and you owe a lot of money on that compared to its potential credit limit, then then there, this code will hurt your credit score. And then how much, if you have a very not very much uh, credit av available on your credit score, uh, credit cards, 
then there are codes that uh, indicate that, and uh, those are going to be dragging down your credit score. D codes are for the derogatory or the negative public records section or other things that, that can bring it down your score. Bankruptcies are going to be found in, this, in these codes. Uh, it used to be uh, before 20, up to 2018, you could find in your public records section of the credit report, you could find um, information on foreclosures and judgments in addition to bankruptcies. But as of 2018, the consumer reporting agencies stopped collecting that information, stopped reporting it, so you'll only see bankruptcies. But there are um, um, several codes, and not just one, two, or three, several codes having to do with public records. Delinquent payments, so if you have missed payments uh, on a card or it's been late, it's going to come under this the uh, D codes. And then recent inquiries, if you made a lot of uh, uh, applied for a lot of new credit in a short period of time, that can hurt under this section of, of the codes. Codes F and G, those that start with F and G, have to do with lack of information. Things that, you know, when, when FICO is trying to predict future behavior, they need to base that prediction on past behavior. And there are certain types of information that are more reliable than others. If the most reliable and the, the most reliable types of information are not on your credit report, it's going to generate a one of these uh, codes that start with an F or G. You have no installment loan history. You haven't ever had a car loan, or it's been so long that it's not even on your credit report. There's going to be a code saying no installment history, no no installment loan information, no recent auto loans, no credit card information, no new credit cards. The reality is new uh, activity on more recently uh, um, established credit cards that you've opened more recently will are better predictors than activity on credit cards that you've had for years and years and years. So if you haven't had a new account, then FICO is saying, look, we can still generate a, a report or a score and try and predict your future um, chances of missing payments. But because you don't have new credit cards, we don't have as much information as we would like to, to, to be as, uh, make the score as reliable as possible. Same thing with not having any kind of recent mortgage information. It doesn't mean you have to go out and apply for a new card. You can still have excellent credit with, with using, having uh, no brand new credit cards no, no recent auto loans. You can still have excellent credit. Uh, your score is not going to be maybe 850 or 840, the highest score being 850, but you can have and qualify for, uh, have excellent credit and qualify for the best terms lenders have without doing and focusing on every single one of these codes. Codes J and K have to do with age, how long you have had accounts and how long they've been open or how long has it been since they've been open? Uh, so you've got a length of account histories. How long, how long have those been, accounts been reporting to, the credit, to, to your credit uh, history? How long has it been since you opened up or established a car loan or a mortgage account? How about your credit card accounts? How old are they? While older seems better, it, it's, it does indicate that you're stable, that you had credit for a long time, and that can actually help your credit. It also says that if you don't have anything new, they can't, they, they don't have as much uh, really reliable information. So uh, these codes can help, they can hurt, but what they're looking at is how old and how new your accounts are. Uh, uh, FICO codes M and M, M and N, have to do with the number of accounts and types of accounts you have on your credit report. How many delinquent accounts do you have? Do you have quite a few that have uh, you've got missed payments on or that are late uh, reporting as late? How many active accounts do you have? How many that uh, you've been using recently uh, over the last year or two or four? How many adverse accounts? How many collection accounts? How many uh, uh, 
over time, how many over limit accounts have you had? How many consumer finance company inquiries have you had? Consumer finance company um, that I call them um, strip mall lenders. These are companies that you can find on in these small little offices, maybe sometimes next to a mall or in a mall or on a strip mall and on a corner somewhere. Uh, sometimes quite not uncommon to find them next to a tobacco shop or a rent to own place. These are places that uh, target or whose target clientele customer is a fairly high risk consumer that doesn't have credit period or has very poor credit. And FICO says, look, if somebody is turning to a company that, that um, generally works with high risk lenders or high risk borrowers, it's a chance that you're a high risk borrower if you're using those companies. That's one of those codes that they use. You've got P's and Q's, mind your P's and Q's. These are the proportions uh, or ratios. High balances, if you've got a high balance on an auto loan, especially compared to its original balance, if you have a high balance to limit ratio on your retail cards and your uh, credit cards, these codes will kick in and, and have a negative in, uh, influence on your score. If you are maxed out, if your card is, if you're using 100% of your score or very nearly 100%, then you'll, uh, your score will generate, a FICO is going to generate one of these scores. Uh, then you've got um, the next uh, scores are the R's and S's. And these all generally all start with too few. Again, there's, it's like the LAC uh, scores, the scores that start with LAC. They, they, they don't see the information. FICO does not see the information it needs to be really perfectly confident in the projection of your uh, your possible uh, likelihood of paying on time in the future. So they will say, look, there's not enough installment accounts for us to make a prediction in the future, not enough retail accounts, not enough revolving or credit card accounts, there are not enough active accounts. There's just not enough accounts with balances. Well, does that mean you have to carry a balance on your report? No. Or on your credit card? No. But for, for in, in many cases, it does provide more reliable information to show, to, to see a balance on some of those reports. Uh, cards, excuse me. I all, I never recommend that you carry a balance on a credit card or store card. Always pay it off. You'll still build excellent credit even without carrying a balance. And then uh, we get into the T's and the V's. Too many. T, too many. Too many accounts with balances. There you go. If you have too many accounts with balances, it's going to hurt. Too many recently active accounts. Previously, we said not enough. Now, not now. Too many. There is a little Goldilocks place in there, and they don't really indicate what that is. But having too many accounts, not having not enough accounts, can both hurt your credit uh, score. Having too many new loans, having too many credit cards, having too many finance company accounts. These can all uh, generate a negative mark on your credit uh, score. Okay, and there are a few others in there that uh, we didn't go over, but that's your very brief introduction to uh, the 132 codes in the FICO credit scoring models for the next gen. That's uh, FICO 8, FICO 9, FICO 10, as far as, I, as far as we understand. So if you have found something of, of benefit here, Please do click the like button. We would love to see this generate a lot more likes and get out there and people understand how their FICO score works. Do also, we, we invite you and we would appreciate it if you would please subscribe to our channel so we can, um, so basically can tell YouTube this is, in, this is content worth promoting to other people looking for information on credit scores. We appreciate that. If you would like a, a certificate of completion, go to moneyfit.org slash live. You'll see a link there to certificates. You'll put in your name, how you want it on the certificate. You'll put in your email address, where you want it sent to, and then uh, indicate that this is the uh, credit scoring factors from October 2020. That's the name of the course. And the passcode will be 1325.
factors, 132 factors, no spaces, no dashes, no dots, no capital letters, all lowercase for the, for the letters, 132 factors, F-A-C-T-O-R-S. If you have any questions that we can answer for you or, or concerns or anything, we can uh, direct you to some resources perhaps. Give me a call, send me an email. You have my information right down there. Glad to hear from you. That's why we're a nonprofit. That's why we're here. It's to serve you and uh, all that we can, anything we can do, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Hope you have a great day and enjoy, enjoy learning more about your credit score.